Hello and welcome back to episode 2 of Project X, in which I am developing and building my own Geiger counter. In the last episode I already built the display unit and gave you a small preview of my already working prototype. Warning. Hazardous radiation levels detected. So in today's episode it's all about the heart of this project. First of all, the idea behind Project X, an introduction of the MM Basic interpreter on which my Geiger software runs on, as well as my design considerations that splits into the enclosure, technology and the PCB design. After that I'll show you the schematics and begin to solder the main board. And with that being done, it's time for a first power up, some tests and the configuration. And finally I'll give you a preview for the next episode. So there's a lot to cover in this episode, let's begin. So what was the idea behind Project X? You can think of it as a development environment with built-in display, VGA connectivity, buttons for inputs, SD card, real-time clock, audio amplifier and so on, meant as a basis for any Project X you can imagine. Most development boards, if it is the right term, are just that, a board, which is fine. This in contrast is a whole expandable device which allows, due to its expansion slots, a huge amount of modifications. It can be a Geiger counter, an ECG or just a simple weather station with some data logging capabilities. <laughs> well, you get the idea. My intention was to have one device which can fit as many different projects as I like, without always starting at zero by designing a new case and putting all things together. That's why I left this free area right here. It is a place for your project's name tag, so to speak. But what is BASIC and why? My interest in this language started with this book published by the Militär Verlag, which I had laying around for about 10 years or so. It is from an era of the Cold War, a time Germany was split in two. And this book describes the whole build of a computer based on the Xilox Z80 chip, an 8-bit microprocessor which runs BASIC. And of course I was curious whether BASIC as a language is still present today. A quick Google search brought me to a somewhat modern dialect of it. MM Basic. It is an interpreted language which has not to be compiled by a compiler. It interprets your code line by line and immediately executes your instructions. Since the Atmega 328P is well known, I may explain it this way. For the Arduino IDE in which you program in C or C++, first of all you need a PC to install the IDE. Then you need to compile your program and upload it onto the microcontroller. Finally, you can run the program. But not with a basic interpreter. As suggested earlier, there's no need for a compiler, no need for a computer and even no need for an IDE in which you write your programs. But how does it work? You just need to flash the Raspberry Pi Pico with the MM Basic interpreter software which you can download on the previously shown website. After flashing the firmware to the Pico, you just connect via terminal program, for example PuTTY or TerraTerm, and you can immediately start to program on the built-in editor and run your program instantly. But as I said, there's no need for a computer. Right! You don't need a computer at all. Just connect a VGA-capable monitor and a PS2 keyboard and you're good to go. You can save your programs into flash slots on the Pico itself or on the SD card. You can run your start program manually or set an auto run option, so the program automatically runs as the Pico is powered on, just like on your well known microcontroller. After choosing BASIC as a language, it's time to plan this project. You already saw my prototype, but if you are interested in the whole design process and my initial thoughts for planning it, stay tuned! And so I searched the internet for an enclosure which has to be cheap, available and should fit a display, buttons and connectors. The decision went to the Gainda G716. First of all, I am drawing my ideas on paper. 
Then moving on to the actual PCB design. Because my back and front panels are just that, PCB material. This saves a lot of money. The enclosure also has plenty of space for additional sensors and modules. The two expansion slots on the back are for whatever you have in mind. Taking all the measurements from the datasheet was really time consuming. Now I'm just checking if everything fits the enclosure. Ah, this looks good. So I can place my order. Moving over to the technology, the Raspberry Pi Pico is also cheap and good available, plus it runs the MM Basic interpreter. Although I designed the PCB modular, I don't use the typical China modules, for example a SD card breakout or a real-time module and so on, for a very good reason. Yes, they are cheap, but the quality is often bad and the solder is lead free. Often they have counterfeit or low quality parts. This is not my understanding of finishing a project. But don't get me wrong, those China modules are great for prototyping. Here I use them on a regular basis. In contrast, my SD card socket, for example, has gold contacts and will definitely last longer. And every connector on my board is gold plated too. I like the detail, but maybe that's just me. The chosen ICs and transistors are also good available and not counterfeit ones. Now let's take a quick look at the schematics. Starting at the power supply, you have the choice of either supplying 5 volts via the DC jack or just using the micro USB connector of the Pico. For my Geiger counter project, it is perfectly fine to use the USB connector for power since my whole unit draws about 650 milliamps at its maximum. Moving over to the right, we see a level shifter which consists of two 2N7000 MOSFETs. It is necessary to convert the 5V USB level to the 3.3V logic level which the Pico uses. A small hint if you ever want to build your own level shifter. It is important that the gate of the MOSFETs is always connected to the smaller voltage, in this case 3.3V. Above the level shifter, there's a voltage reference U4. It is a LM336Z with a voltage of 2.5 volts. I didn't populate it in my Geiger counter project since it is not used. But if a project needs a voltage reference, it's there. Its job is to deliver a rock solid reference for the analog inputs of the Pico, because otherwise it uses its internal voltage, which isn't as steady as my external one, so measurements are a lot more accurate. Well, talking of accuracy, on the right we have a real time clock consisting of the PCF8563 IC and the lithium backup battery. It is to keep the time even if the whole unit isn't powered. It is important to mention that this capacitor can vary between 6 to 22 picofarads. It depends on your oscillator, temperature and so on. For me a value of 10 picofarads is just perfect. If your clock runs too fast or too slow, this is the point to fix it. Below the real-time clock circuit is the 3.5mm audio jack. It is connected in a way that if a connector is present, the internal amplifier and speaker is disconnected. The audio amplifier circuit is on the top. I've chosen the LM4871 for this job. It is a good sounding 3 watts amplifier. To prevent high frequency noise and its harmonics from USB for example, I additionally filtered the power supply of the amplifier circuit with a ferrite bead. What's left is the VGA circuit, the audio filter, IR receiver and the SD card circuit. Those are well explained in the MM Basic manual, so I don't waste your time with it. After all this theory, let's get practical and begin to solder. I always begin with the smallest parts, in this case the SMD packages. Using soldering paste would be good, but since I am not soldering those packages every day, I use my own flux for that. It consists of colophonium dissolved in isopropanol. Doesn't it look beautiful? A nice big chunk of colophonium. <laughs> well, I may have enough for a lifetime. I'm using a Q-tip for applying the flux. My iron is a bit too big for SMD, but it works. It's important to only wipe the solder in one direction. 
usually away from the IC. This way you get good results. After finishing, always remove the leftover flux. I am using acetone, it works way better than isopropanol, but you have to be careful, it is corrosive to some plastic. Now it's really clean. I repeat the same procedure for the SD socket and all the leftover SMD parts. Ah, let's clean up this mess with some acetone. Again. Well, that looks better. Nice and clean. I finished the mainboard. It's time for a first power up. By the way, the GPIO connector isn't populated since I decided for solid soldering connections. Just pop in this battery, some USB power and we are good to go. This is the system configuration. I am setting my keyboard to German, the default is English. And now the I2C. Let's overclock the CPU to 252 MHz. And enable the audio. Ok, what's left is to configure the SD card and the counting pin for the Geiger tube. If you have any problems with the color on your system, you can simply adjust it via this trimmer pot. Ok, that's it for today's episode. In the next one, we finally take a closer look at the Geiger counter module and of course test it with some serious radiation from real uranium. If this sounds interesting, then stay tuned. Take care and auf Wiedersehen.